Hey everybody, excited about a new project here. This is going to be a buffalo skull that we are going to turn into a bronze. This is a last wax process, and I have a brand new product in which I'm gonna teach you guys that I've made. And super excited about the product, and uh, yeah, let's get started. So the first thing we do is we're gonna have a silicone mold here, and I'm using a saran wrap as this is a really old mold in it. It likes to collapse on itself if you put too much pressure on it, so. Trying to work out the bubbles here now, and then we'll uh, cast some sprue bases. Cutting off that uh, saran wrap after it's it's solidified nice and hard. So I'm just doing a little wax chasing pre demold, as it's just an easy place to do it. And uh, the mold had some pass throughs that I wanted to do or clean up before I pulled it out of the mold as it uh, would take the other side of that mold. So easy enough to do. There it is all sprued up. I didn't, I uh, lost the footage on the, on the sprueing. Sorry about that. This is my new product guys. This is, uh, this is Hellfire. It's a refractory coating, a ceramic coating. Uh, it's a fantastic mold mix. It's still, brand new to the market so I'm, I'm learning along with you guys um, but yeah once you get it you want to mix it up make sure that the uh, the water is mixed back into it I actually poured off a little bit of the water as it was somewhat soupy so um, you can do that if you like but get it all mixed up and then uh, once it's nice and uniform then we can go ahead and start coating our piece with it now, I usually take out a little bit to put off to the side. It gives me kind of an idea of how much I'm using on each piece. We do a, we do a, a primer coat on our piece and followed by, well, the primer coat's three to five coats and I've already got that done here and then we're putting on the top coat and you're going to be doing five to ten coats on that so pretty simple just work everything into the the pockets really well and make sure that uh, you don't get any air bubbles as it will show up in the casting itself after the fact so this is kind of a small piece for my product uh, it's it's about right there at that should I cast it in investment or just do it with my product here? So with Hellfire. Once you've uh, once you've cured out the piece, let it sit and dry for a few days. I come back with a torch, and I slowly burn out the wax. And then once the wax is all burned out, then I'll stick it in a kiln and bring it up to temperature to uh, to really cure out the ceramic and and get it ready for casting. And I'll show you the here in a second, but the lid that I that I have for it is just Kel wool and I've coated it with my product. This is kind of in a test stage to see how how well it holds up to multiple firings uh, for forges and foundries. And so far it's doing really well. I did do one patch on it as it uh, as it moved, as it gets hotter in one side than the other. Anyway, we'll be doing videos on that in the near future. So these just came out of the kiln and they're, uh, I think they're right around 800 degrees. They should have been hotter. I'm wishing I'd have had them at 1,000 to 1,200 degrees. And I'm not a professional metal caster, but I'm in the learning process. So we got our three molds here, and these are some other test molds and, and other pieces we'll be doing here in the near future. I'll be showing those off. So super fun projects that we'll be diving into. So I'm just packing sand around them just to hold them upright so that we can cast the metal with them without them tipping over. Pull our bronze out of the, the foundry or the furnace. And I made a big mistake here. You won't see it in this video, but I poured a little cool, and I think it actually was a was a benefit on the buffalo skull as it is a solid cast. 
um, and the shrinkage actually happened inside the crucible before I started pouring, so, or at least some of the shrinkage, I guess not all of it. So it worked out really well for the, the buffalo skull. The other two pieces didn't quite cast out all the way, but that's all right. Okay, once it uh, once it cools down enough, I this isn't necessary. You can break off the shell dry, but I'm really impatient, and I I really like dipping it in water, and it's, I think it's kind of fun. So just putting it in water so I can start chipping off the shell. And uh, yeah, it's looking like it's coming out really good at this point. Super excited. Super fun process to do a lost wax, guys. This is, and with Hellfire, it gives you the opportunity to do castings at home without a whole lot of equipment. You, you saw me using a, a kiln, but that's, that's even not even necessary. Like you can get away without it. We'll sh I'll show some videos on how to do that in the future. Basically, you just have to warm up the mold pre-cast, and you can actually do that on the on the furnace as you're as you're melting the metal. So, so I'm just cleaning it up now, pulling off all of the sprues, and and then doing the metal chasing here. Uh, as small as this piece is, a uh, a Dremel is is perfect for for coming up and chasing the little things that uh, yeah just need to be cleaned up and. And then I start polishing here. This is a, a Dremel that I got from Harbor Freight. It's the Bauer. And I've really liked some of the tools. Like I have a grinder, an angle grinder that I, that I bought that's a that's a Bauer that's fantastic. But this this little Dremel was insufficient. Like it's just not strong enough for what I'm trying to do here. So I switched over to the Dremel brand here. And uh, yeah, we're just giving it a clean up and this is being sandblasted now to pull out, out the rest of the ceramic and the, the crevices and things and sandblaster sure makes it nice as as it is a ceramic coat and it can be kind of hard to get out of the, the small details so it can be done but if you can get your hands on a on a sandblasting cabinet of sorts then or even just an open sandblaster then it can save you a lot of trouble of course, you want to wear your PPE masks and, and things to protect your, your lungs from from breathing in that dust, as as well as here, as, as uh, these heavy metals can be somewhat hard on you. So, so far, this is turning out just awesome. And I'm following up with a, a polishing wheel, and I have a big chunk of polishing compound that I picked up at some auction at some point in my life. So it works really well. Not sure what grid it is or anything, but it works pretty well for me. Then once we got it all polished up, we give it a uh, cleaning. Yeah, I'm removing all the wax and stuff. This is an auto prep. I'm not even sure where they if they do even sell this anymore. Probably high VOCs or something. But uh, carb cleaner, or starter fluid would be just as efficient in, in taking off any any impurities that would keep keep our uh, next part from working so this is a product I bought from Scope Nouveau um, fantastic company I'm not sponsored in any way by them but I've been buying some of their products for some time now and they are awesome so look up their products and we'll be using a ton of them in our videos maybe someday we'll we'll get a little sponsorship from them and maybe even do some some videos for them so here we are just heating up the, the surface of the metal so that the, the white can, can burnish on. I'm not even sure the proper ter terminology on that. I'm not a bronze worker of any means, but kind of new to this process. But this, this white is just so cool. Puts on a cool patina. And this is an oil rubbed bronze here that worked just fantastic. Um, some of the liver of sulfur and of the other other type coatings or, or patinas you can use sometimes like liver of sulfur I think is a little bit greenish in the in the uh, in the color and I I'm not the biggest fan of it if you're looking for that traditional bronze color then then that's what you'd use but I really like that deep rich brownish bronze and so that's what I'm using here on the on the horns 
Anyway, I'm just brushing it on because if I was spraying it on, obviously it would it would be too intense over the white. It would cause some issues there. And then once you've got it, then you can you can do some uh, some polishing. This is a little wire wheel on the Dremel, and we're just cleaning up those areas there. And yeah, it works fantastic. So here's the finished piece. I did put a coat of wax on it. It didn't protect the white as well as I was hoping. So I think in the future I would use a clear coat, a bronze uh, appropriate clear coat, which I need to learn more about as well. So here it is finished and I'm super happy with the outcome. Super cool piece. This is actually a piece that my uncle Bill did. He passed away um, a while back and I inherited some of his molds. And so this is in kind of a memory of him and his work and super glad to have some of his work to play with and to continue on his legacy so there you go guys go out and buy some hellfire if you want to uh, want to create some sculpture and we'll see you in a future video